Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben, your humble host here on the website that teaches you how to play guitar, mandolin. Today is banjo. This is a great, useful lesson today. We're going to learn all about the Ford Reverse Roll. Okay, this is a, a, an intense roll study. I'm going to take you through what a Ford, revol Ford Reverse Roll is, um, the different variations, um, why it's so useful, and then we're going to apply it to learning a great song, Worried Man Blues. Okay, so if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website, banjobenclark.com. You can join as a Gold Pick member. You can stream hundreds of lessons. Also download hundreds of tabs and rhythm track MP3. So for this lesson, I've got, it's about a 20 minute lesson, all on forward reverse rolls. Now I've got the tab with the, the melody highlighted for Worried Man's Blues. And I've got three different speeds of MP3 rhythm tracks that you can download and practice along with. All right, so let's dive in to learning all about a forward reverse roll. Today we're going to learn all about the forward reverse roll. So I'm going to teach you what it is. And then we're going to look at some variations of it. And then we're going to apply it to that cool song, Worried Man Blues, okay? Um, if you've watched my other roll studies here on the website, if you haven't, I really advise that. But so far, um, if you're going in order, we've covered the forward roll and we've covered the reverse roll. Well, this one, as the name implies, is going to combine those two. So if you'll remember our forward roll, it can happen on any strings, but primarily our forward roll simply goes forward and it's a three note roll. It would look something like that. But we're going forward, a three note roll, and then of course our reverse roll is the same thing except backwards. Okay, but our forward reverse roll is going to combine those. And here's the neat thing about the forward reverse roll. It's made up of eight eighth notes, okay, or four beats. And that's really handy uh, because most of our bluegrass songs are in 4-4 four, four timing or have four beats per measure. So it makes this forward reverse roll really nice to be able to kind of slip in measures um, and not have any time left over, if that makes sense. So let's just look at its most basic in its most basic form, I just want to use the first three strings at first, and then we'll look at different ways we can variate that. But we're going to start, let's start on the G string, first string, and just do a forward roll. Okay, so there's three notes. Let's do the forward roll and then come back around and hit our thumb again so that we have four total notes. Sounds like this. Can you do that? Good. Now, we're going to kind of switch directions in our mind, and now we're going to do a reverse roll, same three strings, and then end it with one more first string. Okay, so if we put those two together very slowly, it sounds like this. One more time. That's eight total notes that takes up a full measure. Now that's the pattern that our forward, rever forward reverse roll has, right? Thumb, index, middle, thumb, and then do the same thing backwards. Middle, index, thumb, middle. But we don't have to stay on those first three, three strings. And actually I would say one of the more common ways to play this is for our thumb to do something called alternate. Okay, so our thumb is going to be the one that kind of moves around. And that's what I want to look at now. So let's start on the same string. But then when we come back to play our thumb, instead of playing that G string, jump up and play your fifth string. Let's try that. And then our second half of the roll is going to remain the same. So let's try the whole thing. Now, of course, our other fingers can switch too. So let's try one more variation, then we'll get into this song. Let's start on this fourth string. Then for our index finger, let's play the third string. And then we'll play our first string, of course. And then our thumb will jump up to the fifth string, and we'll come back through. Sounds like this. Let's try that one one more time. Okay, so 
Okay, so as you can see, we're not limited to any certain strings. The main thing is that pattern. Bum, 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 bum. Wherever we happen to do it. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now that we've got that down, let's take a look at um, Worry Man Blues and how we accentuate this melody using the forward reverse roll. Let's now apply this forward reverse roll and learning a song, Worry Man Blues, it's in the key of G. It's a lot of fun to play. Let's go ahead and throw up the first line of tab there. A couple things you'll notice. One is I have some notes um, that are, have a red square around them. Those are simply our melody notes, so we're gonna keep that in mind as we're playing and try to accentuate those notes. The other thing is, if you're learning how to play banjo, this is really handy. Beneath each one of the notes, there's these little numbers or letter in circles, and those are our pick hand fingering. So a T with a circle around it would mean thumb, a one would be index finger, two would be middle. Now the very first measure that we have here, measure one, those are simply some, some pickup notes called a pickup measure. This is gonna come in on the second beat, and it's just gonna walk chromatically down to our melody note that starts in measure two. So it's pretty simple, they're quarter notes that get a beat a piece. We're gonna play three, two, one, and then we'll go into our first forward reverse roll in measure two. Now before we get started, um, let's just look at each measure um, where our right hand is going to go, where our picking hand, what notes is it going to play. So forget about the melody notes right now and the fretting. Let's just look at what, the, what strings are being played. And we're going to do a forward reverse roll that starts on our fourth string you see there. And we're going to do that forward roll and then come right back. So measure two without fretting anything with our fretting hand would sound like this. Now the only difference whenever we begin to play this song is the last time we play our thumb, we're going to place our middle finger down the second fret of that low D string. Okay, so that measure two sounds like this. And you'll want to try to accentuate those melody notes that have the red squares around them a little bit more than the other notes. Now as we get into measure three, 